Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, you will find all the information you need to visit Luxor with a comprehensive list of awesome places to visit and cool things to do. Luxor is one of the most beautiful cities to visit in Egypt. The entire city is an open-air museum full of stunning Egyptian palaces and ruins so that people dubbed it the City of Palaces. The city is split into two sections, the West and the East Bank, with amazing tourist attractions like the Valley of the Kings, Luxor Temple, and Karnak Temple. To visit all these places and explore all Luxor has to offer in a limited period of time requires a little bit of planning and that is what this video is for. So, without further ado, here are the 10 best things to do in Luxor. Karnak Temple is a must-visit large temple complex that is not too far from Luxor City. Located just north of the city center, Karnak Temple is a great place to visit. Right at the entrance of the temple, you will be greeted with lines of ram-headed sphinx statues on both sides. Within the temple, you will find the Great Hypostyle Hall, a large hallway with more than 130 massive columns arranged in 16 rows that will take your breath away. These columns are probably the largest of them all with many of them reaching over 21 meters tall. The fact that they were able to build such an impressive structure with some sections weighing over 70 tons way back in 300 BCE is beyond me. The Great Hypostyle Hall is one of the highlights of visiting Karnak Temple and it makes for a great photo spot if you have a camera with a wide enough focal length to really capture the true scale of these columns. Located at the center of the temple, you will also find the obelisk of Thutmose's Eye, the tallest in the world at the time it was constructed, and the tallest surviving ancient obelisk in the world right now which is quite a sight to behold. Some of you may be surprised to see a number of tourists parading around the statue of a scarab, Ancient Egyptians believe that going around the statue three times brings good luck while going around it seven times brings marriage for those who did not marry and going around nine times causes pregnancy for an infertile wife. And by the way, it would be very nice if you like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos about wonderful destinations like this one. Now that we saw a temple on the East Bank, it is time to explore the West Bank of Luxor and one of the first places you have to visit is the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the King opens from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day except Friday and Sunday. The entrance fee to the Valley of the Kings is 240 Egyptian pounds per person and you have access to eight tombs. To enter the tomb of Ramses V and VI, you will have to spend another 100 Egyptian pounds for an extra ticket. The Valley of Kings is where the ancient Egyptians buried their beloved kings in rock-cut royal tombs to commemorate their accomplishments in life. There have found over 60 tombs and chambers in this valley many of which were decorated with carvings and murals of Egyptian mythology scenes which allows us to learn a bit more about the belief system of ancient Egyptians. Some of the most impressive royal tombs in the Valley of the Kings are the Tomb of Tutankhamun, the Tomb of Ramses V and VI, and the Tomb of Seti I, all of which require an extra ticket to get into. We especially like the tomb of Ramses number I, Ramses number Vi and Ramses number 9, where you will be able to see some of the most well-preserved colored wall carvings still intact, and if you are planning to spend only 100 Egyptian pounds on extra tickets, make it be this one. Luxor Temple is one of the first temples you will see when you arrive in Luxor. This ancient Egyptian temple complex is located right in the middle of Luxor city and you can easily pay a visit on foot. Luxor Temple is an ancient Egyptian ruin constructed way back in 1400 BCE when the area is still referred to as Thebes and it was built as a place where the ancient Egyptian people crowned their kings. The temple was expanded throughout its existence by various kings and the temple is divided into several sections. Right at the entrance, you will find the obelisk of Ramses II and as you walk into the temple, you will find yourself in the grand colonnade area surrounded by giant pillars. As you continue on, you will be in the sun court of Amenhotep III which is a great place to be at sunset. Behind the sun court is the avenue of Sphinx where two sides of the walkway are filled with Sphinx statues, which is even more breathtaking at night. Due to how close it is to the city. It is also one of the few temples you can visit during sunset and into the night to see the ancient ruin being illuminated by artificial lights which is quite a sight to behold. I highly recommend you visit the site around 6pm for sunset and stay until they turn on the light. You are going to love it. 
Luxor Temple opens from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and the entrance fee is 180 Egyptian pounds per person. Temple of Hatshepsut is an ancient Egyptian temple constructed by Queen Hatshepsut in the 15th century BC and it is considered to be a masterpiece of ancient architecture. The temple consists of three massive terraces that rise above the desert that take you to a number of shrines inside the cliff behind it. There are some really impressive columns and carvings to see once you are inside. The place is pretty big and it can take you an hour to see all it has to offer. Now, if the Temple of Hatshepsut seems familiar to you even though you have not been here before, you are not alone. For those of you who are gamers, the layout of the temple will be very familiar to you. Do you remember Sirius Sam 3 back in 2011? Colossi of Memnon, are two massive stone statues of pharaohs measuring around 18 meters high and it is said that these statues had been standing at this exact location since 1350 BCE when it was constructed which is pretty mind-blowing. The fact that you can still make out the seated postures and the anatomy of the 3000-year sculptures really shows just how much of a master of builders the ancient Egyptians were. If you are visiting the west bank of Luxor with a tour, the tour should stop by here for around 30 minutes before continuing on to other tourist attractions. There isn't a whole lot to see but still worth a visit nevertheless. Not too far from the Colossi of Memnon, there is also another impressive temple to visit. The Medinet Habu Temple is an ancient temple dedicated to a moon and it is famous for its well-preserved inscribes depicting the defeat of the sea people during the rule of Ramses III on the walls of the temple. Within the temple, you will also find several courtyards with some really impressive sculptures, pylons, and ancient Egyptian columns, similar to the one in Karnak Temple but smaller. If you went with a tour, this will be your last stop before you head back to Luxor City and definitely a great place to end the day. The temple opens from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. and the entrance fee to Medinet Habu is 100 Egyptian pounds per person. This one like a television in front of you. Look into the animation, please. Please, okay. please, to understand what I say, looking by your heart before your eyes, to understand what I say, because this is animation. Look in how the, our Pharaoh Rams is served on his chariot, and the horse jumping, you see? Yeah. And our Pharaoh, he uses the arrow to attack the enemies. Yeah. And the fast enemies, scenes. some enemies he run away, something he killed, something he went. Looking under, this is the scene. You will see the our soldier giving. So this is like 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 the stone yeah. tell you something. The stone tell you the beautiful story about the famous battle against the Libyan people. Libyan, yes. So that please, please. And when he coming to visit our civilization, as I told it to you, look by your heart before you eyes. Soon we will share other stories from Egypt told by our friend and guide Amr al Shekhari. So like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss them. Located on the east bank of the Niles, Luxor Museum is where are collected and preserved ancient Egyptian artifacts discovered here in Luxor, from everyday items to ancient sculptures and even mummies. The museum holds a stunning collection of items that tells the story of what it was like living in ancient Thebes. One could only imagine what they have discovered in this land of the palaces and how many are still waiting to be discovered. If you are looking to learn more about this ancient capital city of Egypt, visiting Luxor Museum is a no-brainer. The museum opens from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and again from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day. The entrance fee is 140 Egyptian pounds per person. Mummification Museum is another museum located not too far from Luxor Museum and Luxor Temple, that is worth a visit if you are interested in the process of mummification, or how the ancient Egyptians mastered the art of preserving the dead. The museum is not as big as Luxor Museum, but still, quite an interesting one to visit if you have another day to spare in Luxor. The museum opens from 9am to 1pm and again from 5pm to 8pm every day and the entrance fee is 100 Egyptian pounds per person. Located about 2.5 hours by car, north of Luxor, Dendera Temple is easily included in a day trip from Luxor, along with a visit to Abydos, another impressive, but lightly visited site. 
And that's exactly what we did during our stay in Luxor. We recommend that you do the same. You won't regret it. The Temple of Hathor is one of the most overlooked marvels that line the Nile River. One of the most well-preserved temples in all of Egypt. The structure boasts unique features that blend a long line of ancient cultures and traditions. The site is part of a complex of temples at Dendera that worked as widely used worship and healing center during the Ptolemaic era, the last of Egypt's great ancient dynasties. The temple honors Hathor. Hathor was one of the most popular goddesses in the Egyptian pantheon and her role shifted through the ages. Her hieroglyphics literally translate to House of Horus, referring to her protective role as a mother figure and or wife of the falcon god Horus. As such, she was also a sky goddess, ruling over the realm where Horus flew. Abydos was one of the most important religious sites to ancient Egyptians. Much like modern Muslims hope to complete a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime, ancient Egyptians would have hopes to visit Abydos, which for them was strongly associated with the entrance into the afterlife. Although there were several temples constructed here, the largest and most significant is known as the Temple of Seti I. Seti I was the father of the great Ramses II, who actually completed the construction of most of the temple after his father's death. Much of the temple complex is no longer present, including the pylon and the first two courtyards so visitors to enter through a doorway into the hypostyle hall. Many of the wall reliefs inside are well preserved and the reliefs toward the back of the temple, completed during Seti's reign, are considered to be among the finest in any temple throughout Egypt. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Stay healthy and see you soon.